You know, the, the wonderful thing about orthodoxy is that it's not about our clergy, it's not about our bishops, it's about Christ, and it's about ancient Christianity that's alive today and been preserved for modern people, and it's just as effective and meaningful for us today as it was in the first century. But we are like the first century in the sense that uh, we are in a pagan world. And so we want to reach out, as did Paul, um, by understanding the culture. You know, Paul looked at the culture of the Greeks, you know, the pagan Greeks and the pagan Romans. And when we understand what the culture is like, and we're not afraid of the culture, because we want to, we want to bring into that culture what, what they're missing and what they're starving for. I remember once I was with a, with a Roman Catholic priest friend of many years, and, um, and a man came up to us on the street in downtown Seattle and asked me to pray for him. He said, I am having a real struggle, and would you pray for me, Father? And so I stopped, and I, I took my cross, and I blessed him with the cross, and I put it on his forehead. And, and, I, and I said, may Christ help you in every way. And then he walked away. And my Roman Catholic priest friend, who was wearing civvies, said, oh my gosh, he didn't ask me, did he? And he says, and I know why. Because I'm not identified with Christ, because I'm dressed like everybody else. And so this, this false idea that, that somehow in order to bring Christ into the marketplace, we, do, we, we can't set ourselves separate from other people, that we have to somehow blend in and be like them, is a betrayal of the cross because we're not called to be like them. We're called to be of this, of this other world. You know, as, as, as Christians, our, we are part of the kingdom of God, which is, so we're to live in an otherworldly life you know, this life centered in holiness and not the acquisition of things or better jobs or, you know, all those things can be important and, and okay as long as we keep focused that we are not of this kingdom, that we are of Christ. And the wonderful thing about the commitment that I have made as a monastic is that this is what I always wear, everywhere. If, I, if, if it's inappropriate to wear this, in a setting, I don't go into that situation uh, because I'm always on duty. And I have found that because I'm willing to always be on duty, that God gives me the energy to do it and also the insights on how to be there for that particular person or that group of people. So for instance, I was on a ferry one day and I, and I was walking in the opposite direction of a boy of, of about 10. And as we were parallel, I heard him say to himself, hmm, a wizard. And we can't be afraid of those kind of images because in our culture, these trilogies that, that show um, like, uh, like, the, you know, like the Gandalf characters, a Christ figure, and, uh, you know, so the use of fantasy and science fiction to present Christianity to an age of people that are not interested in Christianity is, is, a, is a, an incredible opportunity for us. And in an, in a, in an era where our society has, is so secular that you never see images of Christianity, you don't see clerical collars on Catholic priests anymore. You don't see Roman Catholic nuns anywhere. You know, they're, they, they are, they're sort of disappeared um, into the woodwork. They're there, but we don't know they're there. And, and so as, as Orthodox, this attire that we wear, you know, this basic garb that we wear, um, is a great opportunity. We don't want to let ourselves be embarrassed by it or see ourselves as somehow uh, 
you know, of another era and maybe we should be modernized because that's the failure of the evangelicals is they're trying to, they're always trying to remake themselves, make themselves more relevant. And orthodoxy is, has always been relevant and it will be relevant until the end times. And we don't want to be ashamed of that, but we want to embrace it with vigor.